Dexis Kona. My name is Adezi. I am a pharmacist, a wife, and a mother. And on this channel, I talk about the three M's, medicines, marriage, and motherhood. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, I am so happy to have you here. If you have been here before, thank you so much for staying on this channel, for watching my videos, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you. I don't take it for granted at all. Today, I'll be talking about motherhood. And I'll be talking about uh, some of the things that I didn't know I could ever do or some of the things I didn't believe I had a skill set for uh, before I started having children but now I do them uh, it's more like motherhood forced me to learn how to do these things I'm going to share some of those things with you today uh, motherhood is a very interesting journey it's very interesting it's a roller coaster ride it's been a roller coaster ride for me for 11 years and I've had a lot of aha moments, what I call aha moments. <laughs> a lot of moments uh, where I'm like, Polo <laughs> if you are Igbo, you're going to understand what I just said. Or if you watched um, Living in Bondage, the old one, not this new one, uh, the point at which Andrew Keke was telling his friend, Polo, Polo, Ikoatas Romeho, Fuma. All right? Um, <laughs> I have had many moments where I just went, oh, that quarter's rubbed me off. And I'm like, you did explain, uh, they did explain this motherhood thing very well to me. Uh, I mean, there are so many layers of things you get to you know, see, even if you were seeing them before, uh, but now you're seeing it with new eyes. You're like the actor, the main actor in the whole drama, right? So you're viewing it with um, in new eyes, different perspective. Um, in Living in Bondage then, uh, Andy, uh, his friend Polo uh, asked him to join a secret cult so he could get money and uh, it was that straightforward when he said oh when you join us you make money you do this you do that and uh, when he got in he realized uh, he needed to do so much more that if he had known this before getting in he might say I'm not doing please I thought I want to be poor all my life <laughs> He didn't realize that he had to sacrifice um, the person he loved the most, his wife. And he was stuck, you know, between the devil and the deep blue sea. And we all know how that story turned out. I have these aha moments, like I said, where I'm like, oh, nobody told me that a whole lot of emotional involvement is involved uh, in motherhood and a whole lot of sacrifices are involved in motherhood like it's been quite a journey it's been one of the toughest things i have ever done in my life and this is just 11 years old like the journey is still far <laughs> but i've been able to draw strength from other mothers uh, especially my own mother i've had so many moments too where i go oh i'm being mommy you know all those things i know some of us um, had a couple of things we said we're not going to do like our mothers we're not going to be like our mothers especially the very nigerian dramatic side of mothers <laughs> i'm sure so many of us have said we're not going to be like this when we become mothers i've had moments where i just see myself being my mother i'm like ah hey why am i behaving like mommy now <laughs> why am i behaving like her and it stems from the fact that uh, our mothers are the first role models that we have uh, we had our mothers are the first um, mothers we watched we watched them be mothers they are like our mentors and role models when it comes to motherhood I mean it's a subconscious thing you find out when you're faced with a certain situation as a mother you kind of mirror what your mother would have done yes uh, most times that's what happens except if you really are very conscious or if you have a different temperament with your mother you might not do exactly the same things but i'm sure there are a few moments you've caught yourself being like your mother two years ago my seven year old daughter told me something that sounded like she was talking about my mother she said mommy why do you want everything to be perfect every time mommy you are a perfectionist <laughs> i'm like me oh this one has not met perfectionist like i can stay with my mother she will know that i'm learning work when she said it i, I was like ah, is this girl talking about me or grandma because obviously i am not a perfectionist in my mind <laughs> but that's what the young girl is saying and i saw that about my mom i said it a lot i said my mom can make a fuss about so many things because she wants everything to be perfect 
One of the things that motherhood has taught me how to do is to make hair. Yes, <laughs> weave hair, braid hair, uh, do thread for my daughters. Yes, motherhood taught me that. Uh, when I was in secondary school, I went to a boarding secondary school and we didn't have people coming to make our hair as often. So we used to make each other's hair and I was never ever able to learn that thing. So I had already given up that uh, this is something that I don't have a skill set for like I can never do this thing. I just don't have it in me. And I spent five years in that secondary school and I could not learn it. I had one of my very close friends knew how to make hair. The thing was not working. But right now, as I speak to you, I make hair for my daughters, like very nice hair. Very, very nice. When people see the hair, they ask me, oh, where did you make it? And I'll be like, I made it. And I'll be feeling very, very proud of myself because I know where I'm coming from. Uh, if my daughters are here, they'll be like, we make which hair. It's only thread you know how to make. Ah, uh, it's thread easy to make, but it's not so. And I make it very well, pack it very nicely. Uh, I've also started to try out my hands uh, to make other types of hair, like weaving uh, last year i still tried but it's usually not very neat i still have to put in a lot of effort but the thread i make it perfectly well i'll show you pictures right now so you can judge for yourself This year, during the lockdown, I tried out making braids for Chinua and I was amazed at the results. It was my very first time trying to make braids and I loved the results. Just check out the pictures. Don't you like it? And this is my first time making braids and it turned out as beautiful. <laughs> this is one thing that being a mother has forced me to do. I started out making Nobi's hair when she was about two plus because one, uh, I didn't have help. I was alone with them and taking them to the salon or taking, sorry, taking her to the salon meant that I was going to sit down there with her until her hair was done. It felt like a waste of time because I didn't have a lot of time there. I was managing the little time I had. So I found it was better for me to stay home, um, be cooking, yeah, depending on what it was cooking, something like okba. Once you put it on fire, for the next one hour, you don't have to be doing anything. Um, you don't have to be in the kitchen. So whenever I'm making something like that, I could use that one hour and be making her hair or I could be using the washing machine and making her hair. So I found out it was a, a better use of my time than going to the salon to sit down for two, three hours waiting uh, to get her hair done. That was one of the reasons why I tried and I started making hair uh, for her. Uh, the first few tries, uh, they were not encouraged. <laughs> they were not encouraged at all, but I kept at it. And within a couple of months, I was able to make passable hair, hair that she could take to school. And then when she not joined the making hair gang, I also started making her hair. Another reason too why I prefer to make their hair by myself is that they have their natural hair and not a lot of people know how to handle natural hair very well. Uh, the few salons in Portacot at the time that could take care of natural hair were a little bit far away from me and like I said, I was conserving my time. I preferred to just do whatever it was at home and handle it gently and so that they don't have a lot of pain while their hair is being made. One other major reason why I don't like taking them to the salon is uh, this. There are so many salons that are not conducive for children. Uh, you have some that are quite conducive, nice chairs, comfortable chairs, uh, AC, uh, there's television for them to watch cartoons, but these things are not regulated. Two weeks ago, we were at a salon and uh, when my daughters got up to the making hair section, the children making hair section, uh, the TV was on and Big Brother was playing on the TV. If you know me very well, you already suspect what I did. I went downstairs and I asked for the manager and I told him that it was a no-no for a show rated 18 to be playing where children were. In fact, that show was up there because of the braiders, the people that were making the children's hair. They were engrossed in the show. I'm sure they were the ones who changed the channel and they were engrossed in the show. Ah, so some of them were like, ah, is that Erica? Oh, the girl now fine girl. Ah, Nengi fine passam. All that kind of conversation. This is one of the reasons why I don't uh, like my kids going to the salon. Now, uh, there are some other salons we've been at, even if uh, the, uh, there are no televisions or there is a television and 
It's um, a children-friendly program that is on. Um, you find that the conversations that the braiders or the people working at the salon are having are not children-friendly. Oh my, there was one I went to. I had to tell them to stop. And they were looking at me one kind like, why are you telling us to stop talking? They, were, they could not understand the angle I was coming from. I had to let them know that they should find another kind of conversation to have. These are some of the reasons why I don't like taking my kids to the salon to get their hair done. One, uh, managing their hair properly, uh, their natural hair properly, and uh, making the hair without a lot of pain. Two, uh, the kind of conversations and the kind of things that they are going to be watching at the salon. If I don't have a control over them, I'd rather just not take them there. I prefer the braider to come to the house and make the hair for them. The reason that made me start trying to make their hair by myself is lack of time. Then these other three reasons, um, managing of the natural hair properly without a lot of pain, what they are watching or the conversations they are listening to there now um, kind of uh, made me keep making their hair by them by myself most times the styles that i can make i prefer that the braider comes to the house to get their hair done one other thing that motherhood has taught me how to do is how to do pedicure yes it has <laughs> i have very thick skin under my that thick skin on my feet and on my hands and i have uh, some kind of dry skin my skin can be dry it's just that i'm taking very good care of it uh, two of my children took after me with this um, thick skin on the uh, thick skin on the feet and I realized that I needed to start taking off the dead skin cells on their feet as they got older and then the question of where do I take them started again where do they, do they do children pedicure and they will now come and charge me 3,000 naira ah is this not something I can try and learn how to do by myself and I sat down one day at home soaked their feet in water and uh, warm water and um, soap and tried to get a pedicure done. I didn't do it so well because I didn't have everything that I needed to use and get the pedicure done very well. And after that, I went searching to get the right things, different kinds of files, the razors, and the stick uh, to put the razors to take off the dead skin cells. Once I was equipped, I started to learn how to do it. I started doing it so well that my husband will now refuse to go and do pedicure outside. He will keep his leg and tell me that he needs a pedicure. I told him it has to be paying for it. He'll finish promising me. Oh, I'll pay you. Don't worry. I'll pay you. I'll pay you. People should not ask me why he should pay me. It's not part of the work I'm supposed to be doing. He has to pay. <laughs> Motherhood has made me add this other thing to the many things that I knew how to do. Now, one other thing, again, that uh, being a mother has taught me how to do is not a skill, um, is to wake up at the slightest sound. <laughs> Before I start having children, I can sleep through noises, like very loud noises too. I, you, I, in fact, the noise has to be very loud for me to stay in my sleep. Hey, but now, let a pin drop in my children's room. I will hear it and I'll wake up. I became a light sleeper because of motherhood. Like, motherhood is such a powerful experience it's such a life-changing experience i have learned a lot of things being a mother so many things patience what true love means sacrifice a whole lot of things that i'll share with you in another video another day uh today we're just, i'm just going to stop at these three things uh the motherhood has taught me how to make care for my children how to do pedicure and how I am now a light sleeper because I am a mother. I want to use this opportunity to tell every mother out there, well done, well done. Uh, this, our job is not an easy one. And please, when you feel stressed or when you feel burned out, it's okay to rest and seek for help. Please, uh, all this superwoman thing, you must do everything by yourself. No, 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 no. Because you need to be healthy to take care of these children. You need to be healthy to raise healthy children. Don't ever forget that. So whenever you're feeling stressed, whenever you feel burned out, it's okay to take a break and rest. And this is something that I'm going to talk about again on this channel on another day, how to rest as a mom and how not to get burned out. I have experience with this thing, like I have experience. There was a time in my life I didn't have help. I was alone with three children on the five and their father was not around. It was such a very trying period in my life, but I was able to scale through and I want to share with other mothers 
how I was able to scale through that period. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and drop a comment, like the video, share with your friends. Thank you so much for being on here with me today. Thank you so much. I don't take your time for granted. Bye until next time.